welcome into another edition of Cowboys Rewind. I'm Danny Sarek. On Thanksgiving, the Cowboys fell 26 to 15 to the Buffalo Bills and have still yet to beat a team with a winning record. The Cowboys are 6 and 6 and still atop the NFC East, one game above the Philadelphia Eagles. Winning the division seems to be the only playoff hope for the Cowboys at this point in the season. Against the Bills, they got off to a great start. They scored on their opening drive with a touchdown pass to tight end Jason Witten. It was Witten's 71st receiving touchdown to now tie former wide receiver Bob Hayes for the second most receiving touchdowns in franchise history, just too shy of former wide receiver Des Bryant's record of 73. That fast start was about the only thing Cowboys fans could be thankful for in the game because the Cowboys could not sustain that momentum. The defense struggled to contain mobile quarterback Josh Allen, who ran for 43 yards and a touchdown. They also had trouble stopping their former teammate, wide receiver Cole Beasley, who finished with 110 yards and a touchdown. DallasCowboys.com reporter Nick Eatman sat down with Cowboys Chief Operating Officer Stephen Jones after the game to get his thoughts on the Cowboys' performance. Stephen, let's talk about Thursday's tough loss to the Bills. I know you, you were, I talked to you before the game and you were really excited about getting things turned around. Obviously, it wasn't the, the finish that you want. Yeah, unfortunately, we did get off to a fast start and usually that's a good sign for us. But, uh, you know, from then on, it was, uh, you know, difficult for us. Hats off to the Bills. They've got a great defense. Uh, they played a really good game. And, you know, unfortunately, we had the turnovers again and uh, we didn't create any on the defensive side. And then, you know, had some critical misses uh, on field goals that put us behind the eight ball. But, uh, you know, I believe in this staff. I believe in this team. And uh, I think we're, our locker room's made up of the right kind of guys, as we like to say. And, uh, you know, have all the confidence they can battle back and do what they need to do to still win this division. A lot of talk, obviously. You said you, you still have the belief in, in the staff and the players, but a lot of talk about now Jason Garrett getting this thing done. What gives you the confidence that, that he's the guy that's going to keep this thing and right the ship here down the stretch? Well, our team plays hard for him. They fought, uh, they fought Thursday night, and uh, they'll continue, uh, you know, to fight for him. And, uh, you know, he's done a good job for us over the years. And, you know, just have all the confidence in the world that this team respects him and uh, that they'll do what they need to do uh, to go out and win these uh, next football game. The offensive line had a tough game against the Bills. Uh, that led to some of those turnovers and sacks and, and really had a hard time running the ball. Are, are you concerned at all about, about that group? That's kind of what was supposed to be the strength of the team. Maybe it still is. But. Well, I, I think we had a good first half, and then unfortunately we got behind, yeah. and we had to get away from the running game, and uh, you know we weren't able to stick with it. But the first half was actually uh, solid, but we drove down, of course, and missed a field goal right there at the end of the first half, and then uh, you know they answered, and then we missed another field goal, and then you know, we started, I think, feeling a little pressure to start uh, throwing the ball more. And, you know, we weren't able to stick with it, which is unfortunate. And, uh, you know, obviously that offensive line and Zeke are a staple. And uh, certainly I know uh, we'll be thinking about getting back to that as well. Have you lost confidence in, in the kicker situation or with Brett Maher? No, those are just, uh, you know, kickers go through these things. And uh, he's got a great nervous system about him. Uh, you know, just have confidence that, uh, you know, he'll continue to stick with and, and work on his game and, and make these kicks that we need him to make. Well, Dak Prescott, we've seen him play better as well. Uh, you, you, he's played a, a good season so far, really a great season. You think he's going to be bouncing back against the Bears? Absolutely. No one has more confidence in Dak, uh, you know, than our organization, than Jerry, myself, the coaching staff, the team. I mean, he's the leader of this football team. and. You know, it was tough out there, but uh, have all the confidence in the world that he'll, he'll, he'll be the ringleader of getting this team back on track and making our playoff push. Jones says he still has faith in quarterback Dak Prescott to lead this team and turn things around. Next, we'll hear from Prescott and why he says this loss was on the players, not the coaches. Cowboys Rewind is brought to you by AT&T Academy, the official sporting goods retailer of the Dallas Cowboys. And by NFL Game Pass. You'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full access to coaches film and game replays from week one to the Super Bowl. Subscribe at DallasCowboys.com slash Game Pass. It's so pretty. Isn't it though? Yes, this is for us. 
<laughs> oh my gosh! Oh. <laughs> Hold me. Oh, oh there yes. it is. Yeah. Where's, the, where's the winner at? Oh, 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 uh, you got the best handshake of all of them. How you got the <laughs> so, 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 so we grew up right outside the street. Oh, yeah. Where our family is from, the border of Texas and Louisiana. This place is nice, right? I believe it's really practice. Unbelievable. He's actually the one that taught me how to throw. Okay, we're going to have to. Yeah, I swear. Am I lying, Jace? I say he's the one that taught me how to throw. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Got you. Earlier this week, quarterback Dak Prescott held Dak's giving for a lucky fan with their friends and family. It's important to remember the true meaning behind the holiday, being thankful for what you have and who you get to spend it with. After the game, Prescott says the Cowboys are thankful they have Jason Garrett as their head coach, who has taken a lot of heat within the last week for his coaching abilities, including some from Cowboys owner and general manager Jerry Jones. Prescott says, however, the loss to the Bills doesn't fall on the coaching. It falls on the players, including himself. Prescott had an interception and lost his first fumble of the year. Let's hear from Prescott after Thursday's loss. We started off fast, uh, something different than we've been doing, um, but weren't able to keep it up, weren't able to get it going. Uh, we just, we ended too many drives without points, uh, simple as that. I mean, it, it begins with the offense, uh, converting in the red zone, getting touchdowns, and, um, and we, we weren't able to do that. Uh, and I think it starts there. When, once you get behind like that, that's a good football team we played. Uh, we got behind and they controlled the clock and they did what they had to do, and um, yeah. We heard a lot of screaming and lot hollering in the locker room. Just talk about the emotions in the locker room after the game and what the guys were feeling. Yeah, emotion in the locker room. Uh, just, uh, just an exchange of words about us sticking together. Um, anything and everything outside of that locker room doesn't matter. Uh, and as simple as that. What was your message in that exchange? Uh, it was for those guys in the locker room. Is there, but there's still belief that you can. One hundred percent. There's, there's. <laughs> No, no belief has been lost. No confidence has been lost. Um, this is simply execution, and it's on players. And that's kind of what that, that conversation was. Uh, credit the leaders. Credit Michael Bennett, those guys that, that started that. Uh, it was a great conversation. It was a great conversation. A lot of great words um, passed. Uh, but it's just all about, about us executing um, and, and just getting the job done. And it starts throughout the week about us doing things better. Jerry said his message to y'all is go right to hell the story now. Why do y'all think you can do that, and what will it take to do that? Uh, we know we can do that um, because we control our destiny. Uh, we control the work that we put in. We control how we approach each and every day. Um, we control the, the way that we prepare to get ready for these games. And I have so much, so much confidence in the, the men in that locker room, um, the character that they have. And I wouldn't want to be, in this, honestly, in this position with anybody else uh, except those men. And so confident in what we're going to do. With all due respect, just as a devil's advocate, why hasn't that happened yet? I mean, It will happen. Confidence that you guys can get going and get to the postseason. Yeah, I just said it. The character of the men in there. Um, been through, been through so much uh, with those guys on ups and downs on the field, off the field. Uh, when you, when you're a part of this organization, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff outside uh, outside noise, and um, we've got a group that's able to lock arms and um, forget all that and ignore all that and just focus on what's most important. Um, and right now, it's about tomorrow. It's about it's about how do we get in, clean this game up. Um, get our workouts in, get better, um, and just know that we've got we've to flip that mindset and that mentality uh, to be our best in every single rep and every single thing that we do, and it's going to pay, pay off uh, going forward. Prescott gave high praise to Garrett and the way he approaches the game. He says Garrett brings the right type of energy and focus to this team and that the Cowboys need Garrett to reach their end goal of winning a Super Bowl. How does Cowboys owner and general manager Jerry Jones feel about Garrett? We'll hear his answer right after this. Welcome back to Cowboys Rewind. After the Cowboys 13 to 9 loss to the Patriots, Cowboys owner and general manager Jerry Jones had strong criticism for the team, specifically the coaching. However, just a few days later after the Cowboys Thanksgiving loss to the Bills, Jones says he has his head coach Jason Garrett's back completely. Jones says he is 100% not making a coaching change because he believes the Cowboys have no chance of winning a Super Bowl if Garrett is not the head coach. 
I know Jason very well. I've had a wonderful opportunity to spend a football life with him. So I know him very well. And uh, you know, without a doubt, you've seen it. Nobody is uh, wants Jason, wants it to go. Uh, and I'm going to tell you this right now, he's got my back too. And I know that too, and he does have my back. This is disappointing. Before we started this game today, we said this team's going to be tough to beat. Buffalo's a good team. Uh, we certainly got the momentum. We got the wind taken out of us there in the back part of that second quarter. And uh, we just didn't get it back. They got it done. That's all I'm saying. This is not the time uh, for me. I'm looking ahead at another ball game, and I'm looking ahead at winning four or five straight, five straight, and helping write a story that uh, they'll talk about how it looked like you were down and out and got it done. I'm, and I mean that. I mean that. That's the way that I'm operating. Every decision that I make over the next month will be with an eye in mind to get us in the Super Bowl now. And I would normally say you're really smoking something. I normally would say that. But I know the room. And I see the room. And I'm the one that okayed and put the coaches that are in that room in there. And I believe in this, uh, this uh, group. That certainly was something that causes you to have to check, because you have to reach deep to find out what you're thankful for. That's what that does. Do you have any about respect? the fact that you're talking, more likely? Well, there's no due respect here. You don't even have to have it. Well, I know you respect it, me. It seems like you have uh, tears in your eyes. Can you just talk about your emotions right now? Well, I have it because I've been in a very emotional locker room okay. with a lot of other guys that okay. are emotional. That's, that's what it is. They're 0-5 right Jerry, now against Weaver. winning teams. Excuse me. They're 0-5 right now against winning teams. What gives you confidence that they're going to win out and get to a Super Bowl at this point? I don't know that I would inject confidence anywhere in this thing relative to uh, just the uh, hanging on the mathematical chance, but hanging on the fact that that group of people in there I know that at various times over the last several years, I've thought they were absolutely exactly what I wanted to be in the room with as a part of a team. And so I'm based on that. Those names haven't changed. And uh, we saw Cooper walk off uh, uh, today. I was worried about that knee. Uh, uh, would, uh, would I have uh, had the outcome that way and uh, uh, not been able to say his knee's all right? No. I'd rather have the outcome and his knee be an right. because we have still got a chance, and it's really because of the makeup of these guys. You can uh, call that uh, an indication of just how much I know. Jones reiterated that Garrett and the rest of the coaching staff wouldn't be out on the field if he didn't approve of them as general manager. Jones also added that, if anything, this is just a great comeback story for the Cowboys to win the Super Bowl this year. Next, we'll hear from the man Jones emphatically believes can lead the Cowboys to their sixth franchise Super Bowl championship. The Cowboys have suffered from slow starts all season long, forcing them to dig themselves out of a hole to try and win games. Thursday's game against the Bills had a hopeful beginning. The Cowboys scored on their opening drive for just the second time this year and the first time they did so starting in their own territory. However, not much happened after that. CBS 11's Bill Jones caught up with head coach Jason Garrett after the game to figure out why the Cowboys weren't able to hold that early lead. When you look back at what happened in this game uh, on Thursday, uh, what's your immediate takeaway? As of, obviously the team got off to a nice start to start the game, but then the game got away from you. Yeah, you know we'll, we'll go back and watch the tape uh, t tomorrow. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, we didn't uh, build on that good start that we had. I thought it was a really good first drive to go down there and get points. Uh, the game was kind of you know back and forth for a little bit in, in the first half. There, uh, the couple turnovers hurt us. And I think as an overarching uh, analysis of the game. I thought we drove the ball fairly well offensively. We just didn't cash in uh, on the drives well enough. We had a couple missed field goals. We missed a scoring opportunity down there in the low red zone, you know, late in the third quarter. And, uh, you know, I think as much as anything else, they were able to cash in on their drives. They kept their drives alive. Their quarterback did a good job both throwing it and also running it. They made the big plays when they needed to at the critical moments. One thing you were able to do in the first half of the game offensively, you established Ezekiel Elliott not only running the ball but receiving. He had 100 total yards uh, 
uh, from scrimmage in the first half of the game. Yeah, Zeke did a good job, you know, both running it and catching it, like, like you said. And he's always going to be a big part of what we do. And, you know, we want to be balanced. But, you know, once we got into the second half, they did a good job coming out and extending the lead in their first drive. And then it got into a little bit more of a passing game uh, for us. But, you know, I thought our guys competed well, battled well. We didn't cash in enough. A couple of the turnovers hurt us as well. You know, uh, when you look at the missed field goals, you're, a, you're basically a 7-7 game, tight game, uh, late in the first half when that happens. Uh, how, do, how does a team respond to that? What, how important it is it to respond to adversity? Yeah, like yeah it's critical. You know, you're not going to make them all. And the biggest thing you have to do is get back to work. And, and like I said, we had driven the ball on a few different occasions and didn't, and didn't cash in on those drives. And that, that's going to hurt you against a good football team like this. But you just have to keep playing. you got to keep fighting. Fighting. Adversity is going to happen. I thought our guys battled hard. We just didn't play well enough in all three phases. And uh, your defense did respond after the first turnover in the game. What what were the Bills doing offensively that got that kind of got the defense off balance a little bit? You know, I thought as much as anything else, they, they just did a really good job with their high percentage passing game and they were able to convert the third downs and then he's so dangerous when he extends the plays you know whether whether it's thrown from the pocket he can be effective but then he extends it a little bit you know the guys can uncover uh, on the back end he made some big throws in that area and then he just made some big plays with his feet running the football you know and uh, defensively uh, you brought uh, uh, you dialed up some blitzes a couple of dbs got home on on josh Allen. is that one of the important things to do on him to contain him a little yeah, bit? yeah no question about it and and it's really critical for the for the down guys, the defensive linemen, to make sure they have good rush lane discipline. And, and sometimes when you go against like that, that takes the edge off you as a, as a pass rusher because you have to kind of you know, stay in your lane and you got to be careful about getting too far up the field because that opens up running opportunities for him. So it's a balancing act that you have to go through throughout, throughout the ball game. I thought at times it put some good pressure on him. Other times he was able to get away and make some plays. You can hear from Garrett every Saturday night at 1130 on Channel 21 on the Jason Garrett Show. The Cowboys Thanksgiving game is a long-standing tradition, as is the halftime performance. Next, we'll hear from someone who plays a role in making performances like that one come together. Each year, the Thanksgiving game halftime performance is just as anticipated as the game itself. This year, Ellie Golding performed with the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders as her backup dancers. A special projects coordinator for the DCC, Haley Anderson, plays a large part in making performances like that one come together. This week, Anderson joined Nikki Harrison on Playmaker and shared her journey of how she ended up with the Cowboys after first working for the Los Angeles Rams. Instead of coming here to work here afterwards, mm -hmm. you moved to LA and take a job with the LA Rams. Why did you do that? So I knew I always wanted to be back in Dallas and okay. I wanted to kind of get my foot in the ground and be myself rather than, oh, you've grown up with the family here. You kind of like, here you go. I wanted to be able to fight for my own position. Yeah. And so when I moved out there, my mom was like, I don't want you in like the entertainment business and like trying to go out and be an actor, which I never really wanted, <laughs> wanted to be. And so about that time, the Rams moved back out to LA. Mm -hmm. And so she was like, well, here's an opportunity for you to go out and work for a football organization and be at LA at the same time, so I took it. Okay. And it was a great experience. I started at ticket sales and service and kind of knew from there that I was like, probably not the way I wanted to go. Yeah. But it was a great experience kind of just starting from the ground up. For sure, that was very brave of you. Wow. It was, <laughs> it was a little intimidating being out there at first and uh -huh. being on my own. I'd been out there before for a previous internship. Okay. In the talent world, I was at a, a C, no, I was at Paradigm Talent Agency. Okay. And, and so that was kind of a cool experience to kind of, kind of show me what it was like to be in the talent role. And I was like, that's a long time and probably nothing I wanted to do in the future, but it was a fun opportunity for me to take. For sure, that's awesome. Yeah. Now, did you like LA? Because LA is really different from Dallas. It is very different from <laughs> Dallas. I do miss being out in LA. The weather there is perfect. And I had so many friends out there that I try to get there as soon as I can, just because it's cold and wet here. Yeah. And it's sun 75 and sunny. All the time. All the time in California. <laughs> I love that. So tell me, what is it like working in the family business and being surrounded by so many influential women? Your mother. Yes, my mom being Leading the charge. Yes. <laughs> what is this like? It's been so fun being kind of back and feeling back at home. Mm -hmm. Like everyone here, there's 45% women here in the NFL and everyone's so powerful and loves what they're doing. I think just being around the girls that love what they're doing makes it easier for you 
do your job. Check out a new Playmaker podcast every Thursday morning on all Dallas Cowboys platforms. The Cowboys have another Thursday game, this time in Chicago against the 6-6 six and six Bears. There are still lots to digest from this Bills loss for the Cowboys before they head up to Chicago. Be sure to stay up to date on all the team news on DallasCowboys.com all week long. That's Cowboys Rewind. Thanks for watching. Cowboys Rewind was brought to you by AT&T. SWBC Mortgage, financial solutions to help you meet your personal and business goals. Visit SWBC.com. And by the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. Want to tour AT&T Stadium? For more information, call 817-892-TOUR or visit DallasCowboys.com slash tours.